Hello everyone and welcome back to Exploring Attractions. My name is Scott and sorry about the background. The studio is a little bit of a mess because it's been forever since I've actually like filmed a sit down video. So I need to work on it, put some more wall art up and then it'll look all pretty and everything. But if you're new here, please subscribe with those bell notifications on and leave this video a like at the end if you do enjoy it because today we are going to be talking about the absolute best mazes at this year's not scary farm 2023 the 50th anniversary that's right everybody i'm gonna be ranking all of my mazes from this year's event it was very hard to do some were a little bit easier than others but once i got to that top five it was very difficult especially when certain casts are killing it every single night it definitely changes my experience of these different mazes but as always these are just my opinions from the four nights that i was able to attend this year but with that being said let's start with number 10 which comes to us surprise of absolutely nobody number 10 goes to dark entities it's final year the final year that we go on this space mission dark entities honestly it's very gory which is cool you want that in a halloween-esque type of experience however this year and years prior that i've walked through it their actors have been not dressed to fit what exactly is going on in there uh, now keep in mind this isn't the actor's fault they all do a great job at acting but i feel like the costumes and everything and all the makeup doesn't really match with dark entities that much i mean compared to year one where there's different actors all over the place the past couple of years in the past three years i should say it hasn't felt like that at all. So that's my take on it without going too harsh. I really like some of the sets in there, like some of the different uh, figures that they have moving. I think that's really cool. And I like how Dark Entities makes you feel all uncomfortable and everything because that's also what you want from a haunt experience. But other than that, it comes in at my number 10. Number 9 is going to go to Grimoire. 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 Um, I was actually kind of surprised at how I felt about Grimoire compared to last year. You know, Grimoire was kind of in the middle of my maze rankings for last year. However, this year, it bumped all the way down to number 9. And I feel like it suffered the same fate that Dark Entities did. Where there aren't as many scare actors as there were the year prior. And now I guess you could say, yes, they want to prioritize other mazes that are brand new and get more scare actors in there. However, with that, there are some mazes on this list that have been around for a while that have had a lot more scare actors compared to years prior. I like Grimoire. I, I like the whole idea of it and I like the concept of it. I just wish that they changed a little bit of it up and they kept it more staffed. But other than that, I really have nothing bad to say. Every single night, it wasn't a very long line at all. And the pre-show, they definitely minimized down a little bit, making it to where it can fit more capacity and, and more people through it at a faster pace. Number eight goes to Blue. Bloodline 1842. Last year they had the blasters attached to it. This year they removed the blasters. And with that, I was really excited to see Bloodline because all the sets in there are absolutely stunning. Some of the best sets that Not Scare From has brought to all their event years. And you know, I was right. It was a lot more fun without the blasters. You can actually focus on all the prettiness going on around you. The only thing that I have to knock Bloodline for this year is the fact that they didn't change the actual characters to fit you walking through the maze without any blasters so they're still doing dialogue where it involved the blasters there's still a room where you're looking for different blasters i feel like they should have changed that a little bit other than that i really have nothing bad to say about bloodline i think it was absolutely gorgeous the scenes there are amazing i just hope next year they take the feedback from everybody and they change up this character's costumes they change up the dialogue and they change up a few rooms that fit with the blasters however don't necessarily fit without the blasters and it was awesome because with the blasters like i talked about with the grimoire situation last year the actual throughput of the maze was really rough whereas this year without them people were just walking in and it never got past like a 20 minute wait which is pretty awesome number seven goes to room 13 in a brand new location for not scary firm and one of the brand new mazes this explore the backstory of the devil's elixir and the goring 22nd 
section, which was located right outside the exit of this maze. Now, this maze, like I said, was in a new location. It was in the arcade or right underneath Knott's Dairy Tales. And while I think it did work, I hope next year they figure out a way to make it to where the light leaks aren't pouring in through the arcade because those are visible in some scenes, not all of them. I really like all the characters' dialogue in there, and I like that first opening scene where you see the guy talking about the Devil's Elixir and you're right at that bar. And then, of course, you go into the hotel, which is very pretty. There's that really neat effect or it looks like you're walking like a million stories above in an actual hotel um, where you're not you're just on ground level I think that's pretty cool these characters kill it in there to me this feels a lot like a Queen Mary type of maze which I think is why I enjoyed it a lot is because it felt like that and obviously the Queen Mary's not around no more at least Dark Harbor's not around no more so it was nice to have that feeling once again and I am kind of like a sucker for the old haunted hotel type of theme and of course we can't not talk about that last couple finale scenes those finale scenes are really nice they do a great job at making the room all green and having the fog pour through I think room 13 was pretty enjoyable like I said I just hope next year that they fix those light leaks a little bit but other than that I give it a thumbs up. Number six goes to Origins, The Curse of Calico, The Origins of Ghost Town. And of course, we're looking after the witch Sarah Marshall, and I saw the Katwambis a million times this year, so I was very happy because typically I always miss the Katwambis at the end, which is uh, quite interesting. I don't know why I always miss. It must have been the cash change, but this year I saw him every time, so that was a whole lot of fun. And one thing that I really liked about Origins, The Curse of Calico, was the fact at the announcement event, the little anniversary announcement event that they had I was actually able to walk through it with the lights on so that was a whole lot of fun it was nice to see like all the different trigger scares and all the different effects with the lights on to see exactly how they work and then walking through it at night I enjoyed it a lot more Origins of Curse of Calico will always be a good maze nonetheless I don't think this one ever get uh, an weaker per to say unless they ever just rip all these characters out of it I did notice that the green witch hand wasn't working as much as that used to at the very end don't know if that's just because it's aging a little bit or if it's just they turned it off on some nights I saw it there but I didn't actually get scared by it like I think I got scared by it once and I walked through it a good six times but yeah origins is a classic at not scare from already and you can never go wrong with a walkthrough of origins the curse of Calic. all right I'm excited our top five coming up for not scary farm mazes here so Number five, surprisingly, I have The Depths. The Depths, it's final year. The final voyage is what they're calling it. I can't believe I've already walked through uh, The Depths for my final walkthrough. It's crazy to think that, but The Depths... Uh, I love the depths. It's so much fun. These scenes in there are amazing. Obviously, that giant squid scene at the end is amazing. The sharks, I mean, Davy Jones, the, the shark animatronic. It's all so much fun. I really enjoy the depths, and I think that it went out on a bang this year. I will say on opening night, it felt like there was, like, not a lot of characters in there. However, that was our very first maze of the night so i mean take what you want with that every other run through we had of it it was amazing all the characters were there scaring the absolute living crap out of me in that under the sea kind of scene that they have um i really like the depths i'm uh, sad that it's going i'm sad that we only got one year with the pre-show elevator scene because i thought that elevator scene was pretty neat and one thing that michael from hollow thrills my buddy uh, pointed out to me was they finally actually removed the vacant elevator scene and they kind of made it its own scene which I didn't realize that because before all these other years the elevator was just sitting there and you could see it but not, you never went in it and it just kind of took up space this year it was removed and they actually put a new scene in there so that was really cool to do for the depths final year the final voyage man I'm gonna miss it but I'm excited to see what comes that location because honestly that is a really good location and we've had nothing but hits there recently with the voodoo maze which I really really enjoyed the voodoo type maze there um, I honestly think that's one of my favorites and the depths following it right after so I'm excited to see what follows it up in 2024 number four which came to an absolute shock to me this year was waxworks now I just want to say a huge shout out to the cast at waxworks you guys all absolutely killed it this year I mean I got scared a bunch of times they added like way more characters in there and way more talent in there because they were all on it enact reenacting their characters the perfect way that it should be 
for Waxworks. And I know some are following me on social media, and I just want to say a huge shout out to all of you guys, and huge shout out to all the characters this year at any haunt that you worked at. You guys all killed it. Like, there's no other talent than the West Coast. The West Coast, for sure, has the best haunt talent. I can say that confidently. You guys all rock. You guys kill it every single year but yeah waxworks was amazing i really enjoyed the concept of the maze however it ranked lower in my rankings last year just because i felt like there weren't a lot of characters in there and it just felt like a little bit empty compared to other mazes whereas this year it was amazing and i don't know what the change was but whoever made that change bravo to you guys because waxworks was so much fun i wanted to go through it like a bunch of times during not scary farms run and i think i did i think i got a, a whole bunch of walkthroughs with it i was able to get some amazing pictures some amazing footage for you all so shout out to waxworks teams once again i can't state enough waxworks comes in at my number four for its third year i think at not scary farm i believe next year will be its fourth year all right top three and i guess you guys can kind of guess how my top three is gonna go if you know me personally or at least my social media the number three is gonna go to one of the new ones this year cinema slasher you can definitely tell that a lot of this feeling is kind of like an old slasher obviously cinema slasher type of horror film it gave me lots of reminiscence of michael myers they had its own soundtrack to it which i thought was amazing you need your own soundtrack if you're doing like a brand new slasher like that you had throwbacks to knots in the past obviously with slaughterhouse camp gon get ya trick or treat another one where the characters killed it i can't say that enough but uh the effect in the beginning where you see the theater with all the black light reflective stuff that turns off and on i thought was pretty amazing that they added that the puppet at the end is really neat and then a bungee scare uh distracting you while you're looking at that puppet the whole camp going to get you first scene absolutely stunning i cannot believe that was a set piece at not scary farm they knocked it out of the park with that i really enjoyed the trick-or-treat section in the close quarters there where you're in the bathroom scene the slaughterhouse chainsaw scene was so unique and creative and i've never seen that done anywhere else like that was super freaking creative I mean, I can go on and on. Like, there was so much stuff that was amazing with Cinema Slasher. But honestly, I gotta say my favorite part was the fact that they added that soundtrack to the maze. Because adding audio makes it all the better. It makes you remember it a little bit more. Hearing that music in your head over and over and over again. Making you think, where did that come from? It came from Cinema Slasher. So, bravo to the team, whoever decided on that. And bravo to John Cook and Daniel Miller for putting that amazing, beautiful cinema slasher to life. I mean, come on, surely at this point, you guys must know what number two is for me, uh, if you guys have watched the channel before. Number two goes to Mesmer, Sideshow of the Mind. It will always be in my top three. That's a given fact, unless Notch just delivers an amazing lineup next year, and Mesmer's just at the bottom. Mesmer will always be my number two. I absolutely love that maze i had a couple friends in there this year so maybe i'm a little bit biased on that um but i just love how like messed up in the mind it makes me like it's obviously called sideshow of the mind i like how the facade is animated and there's some kinetic energy there i like how there's characters outside interacting with you i like how there's different scares that you don't see at any other not scary for our maze i like how there's a giant puppet i like how there's a room that makes you disoriented two rooms that make you disoriented mesmer like i said will always be in my top three for as long as it runs at Not Scary Farm. And I want Amaze to prove me wrong. I really want Amaze to prove me wrong. But yeah, Sideshow of the Mind, so much fun. Every single time I walk through it, I walk through it probably the most that I did any other Not Scary Farm maze this year. And of course, on my final night, night four, I had to close off my night. Even though I was super tired, Savannah had already gone back to the hotel, I dragged myself all the way back to Mesmer. To walk through it and close it off as my final maze of not scare from 50th anniversary in 2023 so mesmer comes in at my number two which of course leaves number one the chilling chambers mm, chef's kiss to this one the facade 
beautiful. The first scene that you walk in, beautiful. Everything about this maze was absolutely beautiful. It was a love letter to not scary farm fans who have been going for a long time. Even not scary farm fans who have just been following the event online and haven't actually got into a 10 other than this year, like my buddy Connor. Um, this was his second year, and while he doesn't know a lot of Knott's histories because he hasn't gone, he's followed along online, so he noticed a bunch of references. This house was like a best of maze like it's the greatest hits maze i mean you had doll factory in there hearing that soundtrack again seeing the little figure again ugh, i it was so much fun um the fact that they were able to pull off different mazes in there i mean they featured tons in there they had a pumpkin eater scene as soon as you walk through that first room they had a pumpkin eater scene even though it was small they still had a nod to it Asylum was awesome. Special Ops Nod was awesome. Chilling Chambers is a love letter to not scary farm fans, and that's why it came in at my number one. I was just geeking out when I walked through the entire thing. I was like, oh my god, I remember that. Look, there's a Dead of Winter reference right there. Look, there's Dominion Dam. Oh my goodness, Pinocchio and Strong's here. I, I really enjoy the Chilling Chambers. I just hope that next year, since this year was the anniversary house per se, that it's tweaked a little bit and it's not marketed as the anniversary house, more so just like a best of. And maybe they could feature different mazes from the past. Like take out some of them and feature different mazes of the past. I think that'd be a smart idea for not to do is just consistently change it the more and more that they keep it throughout the years consistently change it and put different mazes from the past in the chilling chambers i honestly think that would be the best bet for them but there you have it my not scare from maze rankings for this year the 50th anniversary i'm not going to rank any shows or scare zones or anything like that however i will give a little summary on the shows the hanging on cancel absolutely amazing i was excited for it but i was also worried like that it wasn't going to be as good as it was in years past but no this felt like classic hanging this didn't feel like 2019 hanging this felt like classic hanging really really good show this year um, I enjoyed it. All the references were spot on to what was going on this year. The fact that they hung Karens with a no boo necklace. Shout out to Knots for being self aware on that. I think that was pretty awesome. And the brand new show in the theater, I thought was cool too. I, I wish it was a little bit shorter because then I would have wanted to watch it more. It's like a 45 minute show, so I kind of like pushed me away from watching it since I took away 45 minutes from my night. But other than that, the choreography was amazing. The different musical scores that they had was amazing. Also in Nod to Nod's Pass, they had Calico in there. They had a doll factory scene, which I thought was really neat. And at the end, they used the rain again. The rain that they used to use for Elvira. And I thought that was pretty cool because we haven't seen that since the Elvira shows because Puppet Ups have been in there. So they've had no reason to really use the rain. So really neat show. I just wish it was a little bit shorter. Scary Zones always kill it this year. The gauntlet was a lot of fun. And overall, this is probably my most enjoyable not scare farm year that I've ever been to. Not just because it was the 50th anniversary, but because of the fact that operations were absolutely on top of it and killing it every single night. But I want to know down below in the comment section what your guys' list is um it doesn't compare to mine is it different let us know down below but that's gonna wrap it up for today's video if you enjoyed please subscribe with those bell notifications on and leave this video a like as always my name is scott you've been watching exploring attractions and we'll see you in the fog positivity is key peace out everybody